Today's video was made possible by Hulu Plus. What's up internet, Kevin here on TLD. Well, it's been about four months since the release of the PS4 and Xbox One, and we wanted to bring you guys a little general assessment of how things have been going for them since launch. We want to cover what's been updated, what major games have been released, how they've been selling, and so on and so forth. Just to give you guys a better idea of just which system might be right for you now that a little time has passed. So let's go ahead and check them out. So to begin with, let's take a look at how both systems have been performing in terms of just brute sales and what people have been grabbing already. And pretty consistently since launch, it's really been in favor of the PS4. So much so that at the end of January, they had almost double the PS4 sales worldwide as Xbox One. Now, as the months have gone on and on, that gap has been getting smaller and smaller, but a lot of people are arguing that that is because the PS4 was having some major shortage issues during February and has only recently really been restocked on a lot of shelves. But you should also note the fact that each Xbox One sale does yield more profit individually, and it's available in fewer regions as of right now. Now, back in the original review, one thing I really stressed was the fact that when it comes to debating on which system is right for you, the biggest question usually is which system exclusives really appeal to you. And this fact has really been reinforced by actual market data, seeing as how both systems saw nearly double the sales during the weeks that we finally got some major new exclusive releases for them, namely Titanfall for the Xbox One and Infamous Second Son for the PS4. Now, these releases have not only boosted sales in both camps, but have also lit a bit of a fire underneath Microsoft who really want to try and catch up during these crucial early months. And so what you're going to see is that at a lot of major retailers, the Titanfall bundle is now only $450, which when you do the math, including the game, that's basically the same price as a PS4. Now, Microsoft directly isn't offering that same deal, but you can order from them a Forza 5 bundle for the same price. Now, as far as how long this price cut is in effect, we're really not all that sure. It might just be a temporary deal to try and get those sales up for the Xbox One, or this might be a permanent price drop, which will really make the pricing a lot more competitive between both companies. But so far, when you look at just sales alone, things have definitely been in PS4's favor so far. Now, in terms of actual major updates to the systems, there's been a lot of things for the Xbox One. Some major, like the ability to now watch and stream via Twitch, but also a number of small updates that people have been asking for. For instance, battery life is once again viewable through the system's interface rather than you just finding out by surprise or guessing when your battery will die. Cross-game chat is now supported in Xbox Live parties, and there have been various upgrades to make the UI more friendly and customizable. Now the PS4 on the other hand has undergone fairly little changes as far as the system goes so far, mostly just stability and bug fixes, but there was an announcement earlier this month that their next update will be a big one, including a lot of things that we've been waiting on, including the removal of HDCP so you can actually record using external game capture devices, you can now actually save gameplay to USB drives and not just upload them directly to Facebook, and the video editor will be much more in-depth. Now once again, those changes are not currently in effect for the PS4 just yet, they're simply ones that have been announced as being hopefully coming very soon. Now there is one thing that I was wrong about in my original review, and that has to do with how both systems perform in terms of visuals, particularly with multi-platform games. Now historically, a lot of times when two systems have different levels of power, a lot of multi-platform titles will still try to even out and basically perform more or less the same on both of them, with the exception of a few minute changes in some visuals or maybe some unique bugs. This has not been the case so far, as the PS4 looks to be the visually better performing console hands down. As we've seen in some examples of cross-platform releases like Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground zeros, in which the PS4 runs it at 1080p, while the Xbox One keeps it at 720. Even in the case of games that are console exclusive to Microsoft systems, we're not seeing games launch at a native resolution of 1080p, with Titanfall launching at only 792, though there has been talk of future updates to both the game and system, hopefully upping this. The fact is though that as current game releases are indicating, the PS4 is definitely the winner in terms of brute performance. Now, of course, visuals alone shouldn't make or break your decision by themselves. As I've said before, and will always say, the biggest factor when it comes to which system to pick for a hardcore gamer is which console exclusives you really care about. And really, since the initial launch, it's been pretty barren, really. With the exception of a few niche titles, ports, re-releases, or just multi-platform games, there really hasn't been a whole lot until this past month. Each console did have its strong openers, like Killzone Shadowfall on the PS4 and Dead Rising 3 and Forza 5 on Xbox One, but since then, there really hasn't been any hits until recently, with the Xbox One getting the massively anticipated multiplayer FPS featuring robots Titanfall, which is also on PC and next month Xbox 360, and the PS4 getting the long-awaited third entry and Sony exclusive Infamous Second Son. Both have been well received and continue to play into the company's histories with the PS3 and Xbox 360. As exclusive-wise, we're seeing a big hit multiplayer shooter on the Microsoft side, like Halo or Gears of War, and a fun, visually stunning single-player game with Sony, like with God of War, other infamous games, or Uncharted. 
So depending on which genres you really like to play, that should give you an idea of which system you really want to lean more towards. Though do note that if you do have a high power PC, Titanfall is available on that as well right now. Now as the future goes for these systems and what games we can expect for them, it's really going to slow down a bit once again until we hit about late summer, early fall. And a lot of releases on the way are going to be released on both systems or even on last gen systems as well like 360 and PS3. For instance, we're going to see Watch Dogs in May, Elder Scrolls Online sometime in June, The Crew in August, and Destiny in September with more releases coming after that. As far as exclusives go for only one system or the other, we really don't have that much for Xbox One anymore outside of Kinect Sports next month, with the PS4 having the Order 1886 sometime later this year and Drive Club in September. So in the end, my views about which system is better for who really hasn't changed all that much since the initial review we did. The only major shift being the fact that the PS4 is definitely the visually stronger of the two systems. So if you're the kind of person that likes to just pick up one game every year like Call of Duty or FIFA, then you might want to get the PS4 just so you can get the pretty experience possible and if you don't care about exclusives. Or you could grab the Xbox One if you really want a lot of the multimedia functions like snapping or easily switching between movies and games. Otherwise, the biggest factor, as I've said before, is which console exclusives really interest you. If you're leaning towards Dead Rising 3, Forza 5, and of course Titanfall, then the Xbox One is something you want to get into. Whereas PS4 fans can currently enjoy Infamous Second Son and Killzone Shadowfall, and can look forward to Order 1886 and Drive Club later this year. And for those of you that just don't care about any of these, or any console exclusives for that matter, you can always of course rely on just the friend method. Take a look at which system more of your friends are picking up, and just pick that one up, because in the end, when it comes to online play, the biggest thing is playing with people you have fun with. Now while these two have been duking it out, it is worth noting that meanwhile the Wii U did not exactly have its most successful first year, with Nintendo ending up having to make a lot of changes and price cuts as a result. But there is light on the horizon for those of you that picked one up or are thinking about doing it, because we're finally seeing a lot of major games we've been waiting on and were promised, including Bayonetta 2, Mario Kart 8, and of course the biggest of them all, Super Smash Bros. This could be the second start that the Wii U really needs, because Nintendo really has had to rely a lot more on first party titles rather than third party since so many left during the Wii. And even the 3DS had a very similar problem when it was first released. It was a very rocky start, albeit not as much, but once we finally saw all the titles we were waiting on come out back to back to back, it really had a resurgence. So that was our little update on how the Xbox One and PS4 have been doing ever since their release four months ago. Now before I get out of here though, I do want to take a moment to thank Hulu Plus for helping make today's video possible. Now a lot of you out there have tried Hulu at one point or another to catch a show you missed or look up an old favorite series, but Hulu Plus offers you so much more. You get the ability to watch old seasons of a lot of great shows, a number of classic movies, and access to special Hulu originals like Behind the Mask and The Wrong Mans. And if you don't feel like watching all of this on your computer screen, then no problem, because with Hulu Plus you can stream directly through a number of devices, including consoles like the Xbox One and PS4. For those of you that haven't tried it and want to give it a shot, Hulu is awesome enough to give our fans a way to get an extended 14-day free trial by signing up through huluplus.com slash TLD. And make sure to use that link which we do have posted below, because that not only nets you that extra week, but is also a great way to show some support for the channel, and helps give us the opportunity to just keep pumping out content. As always guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit that like button to let us know. And make sure to hit that subscribe button as well if you're not one of our regulars already because we've always got more content on the way. Now don't forget to check out that Hulu Plus free trial by going to huluplus.com slash TLD. And we've also posted links below to grab the Xbox One or PS4 if you're thinking about grabbing one for yourself. Until next time guys, I'm Kevin for TLD and we'll see you later.